So we started uh, with section 7.3 on page of, uh, 501 about adding and subtracting rational expressions with the same denominator. So on that page uh, in your book, you're going to see just a formula, which is very similar to a formula that you have when you are adding uh, fractions uh, with the same denominator. So for example, uh, you have P over R plus Q over R. And in this case, you only need to uh, get the common denominator, which is R, and you add the numerator. So you just P plus Q, okay. and you do all the simplification that you're going to need to, to work on. So I'm going to use this uh, method to add uh, rational expressions with the same denominator because, uh, as I mentioned before, rational expressions are just fractions where the numerator and the denominator are, are polynomials. So let's start with the, with the first example, uh, example one from page 501. And uh, the example is just, we're going to add um, 2x uh, minus 1 over 3 plus x plus 4 over 3. So that's uh, the problem that we're going to solve. So this is my first uh, rational expression. This is my second rational expression. So the first thing that I'm going to look for is uh, to see whether we have a, a common denominator. So in this case, we have the same denominator is 3. So it's a common denominator. It's, a, it's the same denominator. So you're going to write just that denominator here. And uh, you just uh, incorporate in one single numerator uh, the previous denominator. So you're going to write 2x minus 1 plus x plus 4. And also remember that I mentioned the, the other day that it's very if you have parentheses to distinguish clearly uh, where you have your uh, numerator. So in this case, it should be 2x minus 1 plus x plus 4. In this case, it's irrelevant uh, to do that, but when you are subtracting, it's going to be very important to, to do this extra step. So the next step is just uh, breaking or applying the distributive property to remove the nominators, uh, sorry, to remove the parentheses, so, and then combining uh, like terms. So in this case, we're going to have 2x plus x is going to be 3x and uh, negative 1 and positive 4 is going to be positive 3 over 3. So this is the end of the addition. The last step is that you need to simplify your rational expression. How? The same way that uh, we have been doing um, so far. So you factor, factor the, the, the greatest common factor, uh, in this case, uh, out of the numerator. So you have 3x plus 3. So I'm going to factor... Uh, 3x plus 3. So what is the greatest common factor? It's going to be just 3 that multiplies x plus 1. So I used to do this factoring apart. So and then I just return to the original um, uh, work that we are uh, doing. So I'm going to write 3 that multiplies x plus 1 over 3. And then the last step is just canceling common uh, factors from the numerator and the denominator. In this case, you can cancel this 3 and this 3. So the, these two uh, coefficients will go away. So you're going to get at the end just x plus 1 is the final answer. So uh, let's see. We're going to work uh, one more problem, problem before uh, uh, solving some subtractions. So example two, example two on page 502 is about uh, other addition. So we're going to add um, x squared over x squared minus 9 
plus 9 minus 6x over x squared minus 9. So again, uh, I enclose in parentheses everything. So you can see here that you have two denominators that are the same. So this is my common denominator, x squared minus 9. So I can write that common denominator here. So it's going to be x squared minus 9. Then uh, I'm just going to uh, get my numerators into uh, this uh, numerator. So it's going to be x squared. Then this is the first the first numerator. Then the second one is 9 minus 6x. Then you just combine like terms. So here you have x squared. Then uh, you don't have x's, only this one, negative 6x, and then plus 9 over x squared minus 9. So now uh, this is the end of the addition, but uh, we need to finish this work by uh, simplifying the rational expression. So how do we simplify a rational expression? We need to factor uh, numerators and denominators. So in this case, I'm going to factor first uh, x squared minus 6x plus 9. I'm going to factor uh, this numerator. So you're going to look for numbers that when you multiply them, you're going to get 9. And if you add them up, you're going to get negative 6. So what are those numbers? Uh, 3 and 3. So negative 3 times negative 3 is going to give me 9. And also negative 3 plus negative 3 is going to give me negative 6. So negative 3 is the numbers. The, the, negative 3 uh, and negative 3 are the numbers that I'm going to use to break the middle term. So I'm going to write x squared minus 3x minus 3x again and finally plus 9 then you do factoring by grouping so when you factor by grouping from the first one you're going to get x that multiplies x minus 3 and let me see because my marker is not working so let's use this one x that multiplies x minus 3. And from the second group, I'm going to factor out negative 3 that multiplies x minus 3. So this um, the numerator is going to become x minus 3 that multiplies x minus 3. Now I'm going to factor also the denominator x squared minus 9 so you can see here that we can use a special product because this is a perfect square and this is also another perfect square okay I can write 9 as 3 squared so this is my a this is my b so I can write a plus b x plus 3 a minus b x minus 3 so now I have both the numerator and the denominator in a factor form so i can finish the problem by simplifying uh, common factors from the numerator and the denominator so let me do this in, on the next page over our notes so i'm going to rewrite this uh, rational expression here by using uh, the factors i just found so this is the rational expression so it's going to be written now as x minus 3 times x minus 3. So this is the result from this factoring. And this is going to be over x plus 3 times x minus 3. So from here you can see that you're going to remove this. So you're going to end up with x minus 3 over x plus 
3. So that is the final answer for this addition. So let's uh, work now subtractions. So the only difference when you have a subtraction, so if you have P over R minus Q over R, you're going to write again your common denominator and then you're going to write the difference as a single numerator. So this is for subtraction of rational expressions. So uh, let's work a couple of examples. So we have example 3 on page 502 and the problem is that we're going to subtract First, we have uh, 2x plus 3 over x plus 1 minus x over x plus 1. So, uh, I'm going to enclose in parentheses to prevent mistakes. So, you can see here, you check the denominators. Uh, is they are the same, so you have a common denominator which is x plus one, and you just write the numerators as, as a as a as a difference. So you're gonna have two x plus three minus x. So that's uh, then you just need to uh, combine like terms. So you have two x minus x. You get 1x plus 3 over x plus 1. So that's the final answer. Then there is another problem. Uh, is 5x plus 1 over x squared minus 9 minus and then we have 4x minus 2 x squared minus 9 so that's the way that the problem is written in your book I'm going to write an extra step because this is very important that you see how the problem comes in, in, in the on paper and that you need to use parentheses to prevent mistakes so I'm doing this uh, I'm emphasizing this because now you're going to see the difference of using and not using parentheses. And I'm doing this because uh, in the past, uh, most of students failed this problem because they didn't use parentheses. So they didn't apply correctly the distributive property here. So first, denominators. They are the same. So we have a common denominator, which is x squared minus 9. Then, numerators, we're going to write the difference by x plus 1 minus 4x minus 2. So now, we're going to apply the distributive property here to remove the parentheses. This is important. This is something that you need to do any time that you are subtracting. So, let's write uh, everything without parentheses, so we're going to break the parentheses in the numerator, so you're going to get 5x plus 1, so that's the first parenthesis, that's the contents of the first parenthesis. Then I have 4x, if you apply this negative, it's going to become negative 4x. Then negative 2 is going to become positive 2. Finally, I'm going to write the denominator x squared minus 9. So I'm going to combine like terms. So I have 5x minus 4x is going to be just 1x. And then I have positive 1 and positive 2 is going to be positive 3 over x squared minus 9. So that's the end of the subtraction, but that's not the end of the problem. We need to simplify. But it's important to know that if you don't this process, applying the distributive property, and you just keep the same sign for negative for 2 as negative 2 then you're going to have 1 minus 2 you're going to have negative 1 here 
and then you don't do anything else so you're gonna get uh, the wrong answer because now in the next step you're gonna see that we're gonna simplify and we're gonna remove uh, or it's gonna be different the answer is gonna be different so uh, to do the simplification we're gonna factor the denominator so the denominator is x squared minus 9 so at this point of the the course you should be able to write this in a single steps you know that this is the difference of two perfect squares so this is just x plus 3 times x minus 3 so we have done this problem a lot of times so you know that you just need a and b and a is going to be x, b is going to be the square root of 9, which is 3. So that's the way that you're going to write this. So, so I have x plus 3. I'm going to use a parenthesis. Don't forget the parenthesis. And here you're going to get x plus 3 times x minus 3. So this is the case that some students uh, get confused because you're going to remove this x plus 3. And you're going to remove this x plus 3. So it seems that you are ending up with only x minus 3 and some people write x minus 3 as the final answer but that's not the right answer because the numerator still has a factor which is 1. Don't forget that. What is in the denominator remains in the denominator. So you cannot write this as just x minus 3 because everything, the rest of the, the expression vanished because that's, that should be the wrong, the wrong answer. So the right answer is just writing 1 over x minus 3. Okay, so let's see. We have a problem. Yeah, we have two more problems and then you're going to have a time to, to play with this. So let's work two more problems. So we're going to work now another example so this is example 4 example 4 on page 504 so example 4 is on um, we're gonna subtract and what we have is 20 y square plus 5y plus 1 plus 5 plus 1 over 6y square plus y minus 2 then we have a minus here and we have another rational expression so we have a uh, y square uh, minus 12y uh, minus 5 then the denominator is the same 6y square plus y minus 2 so re remember we have parentheses here so we check the denominators, they are the same, they are the same. So we're going to get use a single denominator. The common denominator is 6y squared plus y minus 2. Then we're going to write the numerator. So it's 20y squared plus 5y plus 1. Then you can apply directly in this step the distributive property so we're going to distribute this negative sign across these three terms inside of this parenthesis so you're going to get negative a y square you're going to get positive 12 y and you're going to get positive 5 and then you just combine like terms in the numerator so you have 20 y square minus a y square that should be 12 y square then I have 5 y plus 12 is going to be 17 y and finally 1 plus 5 is going to be 6 so 
looked at the numerator and then the denominator is 6y squared plus y minus 2. So the end of the subtraction is here, but that's not the end of the problem. We need to simplify this last rational expression. So let's see, it's going to be a lot of work because now we have two trinomials that we need to factor. So let's start, let's try to find the factors. So, so we're going to have to factor uh, 12y squared plus 70y plus 6. So that's the first one. So let's see. We're going to get uh, two numbers that when I multiply them, I'm going to get AC, which is 12 times 6. And then if I add up these two numbers, I'm going to get B, which is 17. So let's see all the possible combinations that we can use. If we multiply 12 and 6, uh, but if you add them up, you get 18. So that's not the, the combination that we need. So let's factor 12. 12 might be 4 times 3, and we leave 6 here. So let's see if other combination can work. So if I multiply 6 and 3, I'm going to get... 18 with 4 doesn't give me 17 and 24 so I need to break probably 6 as 3 times 2 so now we can have 9 and 8 so these are the numbers 9 and 4 times 2 is going to be 8 so the product of this uh, two numbers are going to give me uh, 12 times 6, which is uh, 72. So this is 72. And also, if I add up 9 and 8, if I add them up, if I add them up, I'm going to get 17. So this is an addition. 9 plus 8. So I'm going to break the middle term of this trinomial. So I have 12y squared plus 9y plus 8y plus 6. So that's the result of breaking the middle term. It's just 9y plus 8y. And then I'm going to use factoring by grouping. So factoring by grouping. So I'm going to get... Uh, what is the greatest common factor in this case? So it's going to be uh, 3y that multiplies 4y plus 3. And then what is the greatest common factor here? It's going to be 2 only that multiplies 4y plus 3. So, at the end of the day, we're going to get the common binomial is 4y plus 3, and the other binomial is created by using the greatest common factor, so 3y plus 2. So, that's the first uh, factor, uh, the first um, trinomial factor that we factor. So, we're going to have now the second trinomial. So we're going to factor the other trinomial is 6y squared plus y minus 2. So again, we're going to look for two numbers that if you multiply them, you get negative 12 because that's the product of a and c. And if you add up those new numbers, those new two numbers, those uh, two new numbers we're going to get uh, 1. So what are those numbers? You can see that 
4 times negative 3 is going to be negative 12. And 4 plus negative 3 is going to be 1. So we're going to break the middle term. And we're going to get 6y squared is the leading term. Then you need to write plus 4y minus 3y and then minus 2. Then we get uh, factoring by grouping. So in this case, you're going to have 2y that multiplies 3y plus 2. And from here, you're just going to factor negative 1. So you're going to get 3y plus 2. So at the end, you're going to get 3y plus 2 that multiplies 2y minus 1. So now we're going to write everything using those factors. So we were trying to finish our subtraction, 12y squared plus 70y plus 6 over 6y squared plus y minus 2. So let's write here, going back to our previous work. So we can rewrite this. So the numerator is... 4y plus 3 times 3y plus 2. And the denominator, you need to write 3y plus 2 times 2y minus 1. So now you can see that you can factor, that you can cancel common factors between the numerator and the denominator. So one from the top, one from the bottom. So this goes away, this goes away. So you end up with 4y plus 3 over 2y minus 1. So that was a long, long exercise, but it's important for you to see all the steps because you're going to have one problem like this in your uh, final exam. So let's work one more problem, and then you're going to have time to practice this. So we're going to work example... Uh, Five. Example five on page mm, five oh five. So uh, we're gonna subtract. Uh, we're gonna add in this case. That's an addition. We're gonna add x square over x minus five plus. 4x plus 5 over 5 minus x. So this is an addition, but uh, this is an addition uh, where the denominators are not the same, are almost the same. There is just a little uh, difference between these two denominators. So let's uh, rewrite these um, rational expressions by expressing the denominators in the traditional form, which is just uh, writing in, uh, in a descending order of uh, powers of x. So we're going to have x squared over x minus 5 plus 4x plus 5. And in this case, we need to write first the x and then the constant term. So you can see here that. Uh, these are not the same, uh, but you can see here also that you can factor out the negative sign out of this uh, denominator. So let's do that. We're going to get x squared over x minus 5. And then you have plus, and then you have 4x plus 5, and then you have here negative and then you get x minus 5. Okay, so I'm just changing the sign of everything here in the denominator uh, to get the negative sign outside of the parentheses. So the next step is that this addition is going to become a subtraction. 
So you're going to write this as x squared over x minus 5 minus 4x plus 5 over x minus 5. So we are combining, we are multiplying this positive and this negative to get a negative sign. And the rest is just the same. You just have your common denominator here. You use parentheses to prevent mistakes. So you're going to get uh, the common denominator is x minus 5. Uh, the numerator is going to be the first uh, numerator minus the second numerator. And then we're going to apply the distributive property. We, we could ap apply the distributive property here, but I'm going to do it now in here. So I'm going to get x squared, then negative 4x, then negative 5 over x minus 5. So this is the end of the addition of subtraction, but we still need to uh, simplify this rational expression by factoring, in this case, the, the numerator. So we're going to factor the numerator. So let's do that. I'm going to factor um, x squared minus 4x minus 5. So again, looking for two numbers that when you multiply them, you get negative 5. And when you add them, you get negative 4. So what are those numbers? Those numbers are uh, uh, negative 5 and positive 1. The product is going to be negative 5. And the addition is going to be the addition of these two numbers is going to be negative 4. So those are my numbers. So let's rewrite the trinomial as x squared. Then the middle term is going to be minus 5x uh, plus 1x minus 5. And you factor by grouping. So... From the first group, you get x that multiplies x minus 5. From the second group, you use factor 1, and you get x minus 5. So the final uh, result is x minus 5 that multiplies x plus 1. So now, going back to our work, going back, we're going to be able to write everything. So we have x squared minus 4x minus 5 over x minus 5. Now we can write the numerator as x minus 5 that multiplies x plus 1 and divided by x minus 5. We use parentheses to see that we can cancel a whole parenthesis. Remember, you cannot cancel just x and x because this x is part of this binomial so it's not alone it's link it's chain chain to the to to the to the number five here so so we remove this at the same time that we remove this other factor so we're gonna end up with only x plus one as the final answer and there is one more problem in your book but I think uh, this is going to be something that you may just check at home and, and work uh, and follow the steps. So I think it's time for you to practice everything from this section because we still need to cover another section. So this is um, 7.3 exercise set on page uh, 5. Oh, six. So you're going to work uh, five problems and then five more for the other section. So let's see the first five problems. You're going to start with problem 14. So it's just an addition. So you have x over x minus 4 
plus uh, 9x plus 7 over x minus 4. Then we have problem 16. Uh, it's another addition. 3x plus 2 over 3x plus 4 plus 3x plus 6 over 3x plus 4. Then we have problem 20. Problem 20, you have y plus 2 over 6y cube plus uh, 3y minus 2 over 6y cube. Then problem 34. So we are covering uh, all the possible scenarios that you might have in your final exam. So 34 is just y squared plus 3y over y squared plus y minus 12 minus and the second rational expression is y squared minus 12 uh, over y squared plus y minus 12 and finally problem 62 Problem 62 is just 2y over x squared minus y squared plus 2x over y squared minus x squared. So those are the problems. So solve these problems and show me your answers by using the, the chat box or by sending me a screenshot uh, uh, to my email or to or you can upload actually you can upload your results by using canvas uh, and pressing the submit button okay now we're gonna cover section 7.4 on page 509 and it's about uh, adding and subtracting rational expressions with different denominators. So uh, we're going to need to deal now with the least common denominator. The least common denominator. So that is going to be our first step. We're going to need to find the least common denominator. Uh, then we're gonna uh, rewrite the uh, rational expressions in a way that all of them have the least common denominator as their new denominator. It looks like redundant, but I prefer being redundant so this can uh, can be understand understood well. And then you just proceed as uh, adding or subtracting add or subtract add or subtract uh, uh, the new rational expressions with uh, common denominator or with the same denominator so essentially we're going to transform the problem where we have a rational we have rational expressions with different denominators into rational expressions with the same denominator and to do that we need to find the least common denominator so there are going to be uh, 
there are two ways to, to do that. The one way is describing your book, and the other way is using a formula. Uh, this formula works when you have only two, uh, when you are, the, uh, you are adding two rational expressions. So I'm going to write the formula here. So if you are adding, for example, you have, let me write here. So you have u over a. So that's, that's my first rational expression. I'm going to add to other rational expression, which is going to be v over b. So the, the denominators are different, so we need to find the least common denominator. So the least common denominator for a and b, that's my formula, is going to be the product of these two. So you're going to multiply both denominators and you're going to divide by the greatest common factor of both denominator. So this is a formula to find the least common. This is a formula to find the least common denominator of for two rational expressions. This is important. If you have three or more, then you need to worry in pairs. You get the least common denominator for two of them, then uh, you continue adding one more at a time. So for, this is the formula to find the least common denominator for two rational expressions. So this is uh, methods to find the least common denominator. So this is the first method by using a formula. The second method is going to be just um, going to factor uh, all denominators, and then uh, you're going to compose the least common denominator by uh, multiplying the first denominator and any missing factor from the other denominators. So we're going to see this uh, in action by solving examples. So uh, let's see. Uh, we're going to start directly by by working uh, examples where we're going to add or, or subtract rational expressions. So let's start with the first one. So we're going to start with example uh, four. That is going to be my first example. Example 4, this is on page 512. Uh, and we're going to add, we're going to add uh, 7 over 6x squared plus 2 over uh, 9x. Okay, that's the problem. So the first thing that you notice is that the denominators are different. So the denominators are different. So we need to look for, so we need to look for the least common denominator. So let's see. So I have, uh, I'm going to find the least common denominator, the least common denominator. And this least common denominator is going to be for these two, so I'm going to use right here 6x squared 
9x is just notation. It's just for me to know that the least common denominator I'm going to find is for these two denominators. So my formula is that you're going to multiply these two quantities. So you're going to have 6 times 9 and x squared times x. So that's the product. That's what my formula says here. So you're going to multiply the denominators and you're going to divide the result by the greatest common factor of both denominators. So let's find the greatest common factor. So let's find the greatest common factor uh, of these two. What is the greatest common factor of these two? So the greatest common factor of these two is the greatest common factor of coefficients. The greatest common factor of coefficient coefficient is going to be 3, right? Uh, and the greatest common factor of variable is going to be just x. Okay, so that's the greatest common factor. So I'm going to write here 3 times x. And everything is written in a factor form, you can see here. So the product of these two denominators is here. The greatest common factor of these two denominators is here so now you can simplify everything so you can cancel 1x uh, from the numerator and you can cancel 1x from the denominator and finally you have uh, 6 divided by 3 is going to be 2 2 times 9 is going to be 18. So the least common denominator that I'm going to work for this problem is going to be 18 because 6 divided by 3 is 2 and 2 times 9 is going to be 18 and x squared which is the only uh, part of the variable part that remain once you remove x and x. So that's the least common denominator for my problem. So that's the first step, finding the least common denominator. That was my first step. The second step is that I'm going to rewrite my rational expressions by using, by uh, trying to obtain the least common denominator for every one. So I have, I'm going to write again six, sorry, seven, so over six x squared and plus, 2 over 9x. So that's my original problem. So now I'm going to write this. This is rational expressions in a way that they are going to have the same denominator. So uh, how can I do that? I'm going to write my first uh, rational expression. I'm going to use parentheses. I'm going to multiply the first rational expression by something and I'm going to write the second rational expression and I'm going to multiply that one by something. And what is that something? So I have my least common denominator to be 18x squared. So what is the factor that I need to use here uh, that I'm going to multiply to uh, with a uh, 6x squared to get 18? So if I multiply 6 by 3, I get 18. If I multiply x squared by nothing, I get, well, by 1, sorry, you get x squared. So the only factor I require here is to multiply 6x squared by 3 to get 18x squared. If I multiply the denominator by 3, I need to multiply the numerator by 3. Okay? This second step is going to be the same regardless the method that you use for the least common denominator. So the least common denominator is one step. And in this case, I use my formula. But if you use the method that is in the book, it's the same thing. You're going to get this least common denominator. But the second step is, regardless of the previous step, you need to convert your rational expressions 
in rational spaces that are going to contain the least common denominator as the denominator for every rational expression. So again, for the from the for the first one, I need to multiply this quantity, this expression by three, to get 18x squared. The second one. So what what is the factor that is missing here? So I need to multiply nine by two to get 18. And I need to multiply this x by x to get x squared. So now I know the corresponding factors that I'm going to use for every fraction. They are going to be different. So you're not going to multiply by the same factor both uh, denominators because initially they are different. So the factors that you're going to use are also different. So if I multiply by 2x this second denominator, I need to multiply by 2x also the corresponding numerator. And the rest is just uh, finishing this operation. So I'm going to get 7 times 3 is going to be 21. 6 times 3 is going to be 18x squared. And then plus 2 times 2x two uh, two is going to be 4x. And 9 times 2 is going to be 18 x squared. So what did you get? Now you have the addition of two rational expressions with the same denominator. And that denominator is your least common denominator, the one that you wanted. So now the final step is you can combine this just in one single fraction by writing the least common denominator here. Then you write the numerator here. So, uh, and that is going to be the final answer because there is nothing else that you can do to simplify things. Okay, so that's the method to find the least common denominator using a formula and then uh, the addition, the conversion of the, the rational expression into rational expression with the same denominator. So let's work. Uh, Another example. So I'm going to work example five on page five thirteen. So we have to add uh, three over x plus one plus five over x minus 1. So again, you check and you see that you have different denominators. So we need to get the least common denominator. So the least common denominator is going to be the product of this denominator. So x plus 1 times x minus 1 over the greatest common factor of these two, what is the greatest common factor of these two? So the greatest common factor in this case, because they are different, is just one. So my least common denominator is just x plus one times x minus one. So in this case, the formula can be a little bit confusing because finding the greatest common factor of these two quantities you need to see these two parentheses as two different variables because the con their contents is different. So this is like having a W and this is like having a, a Y. So they are different. What is the greatest common factor in those cases? You just multiply both variables. Remember, you multiply the variables. But you can use the method that is in, your, in the book. The method that is in the book is just factoring everything. So in this case, the denominators are already in factor form. So in the book, in the book, the least common denominator is obtained in the following way. You write the first denominator is x plus 1. And then you start multiplying uh, by checking every denominator that is remaining 
and just multiplying by the factors that are not included in the first denominator. So the only factor that is not included is x minus 1, because that's the only factor that there is there and is different. So you're going to see, you're going to understand this maybe in the next problem or two more problems. But the important thing is that you need to find the least common denominator. So let's let's finish this problem. So once you have the least common denominator, we need to write the original rational expressions. So we're going to multiply them by something each uh, to get the least common denominator in every denominator. So I need to multiply x plus 1 by something to get x plus 1 times x minus 1. What is that something? You can see that is x minus 1. Then I'm going to multiply by x minus 1 here. So in the other case, so I have x minus 1. I need to multiply this x minus 1, one by, by something to get this quantity. What is that extra piece that I need to incorporate here is going to be x plus 1. Then remember, any time that you multiply the numerator of a fraction by something, uh, you need to multiply also the numerator. So both the numerator and the denominator should be multiplied by the same expression to prevent mistakes. Once you have that, now you can see you have the same denominator in both cases. So now you have a common denominator, which is x minus 1 times x plus 1. And then you can now proceed by doing this operation. You're going to have 3 that multiplies x minus 1 plus 5 that multiplies x plus 1. So that's... Uh, then the, just uh, uh, rewriting the addition of two rational expressions as a single rational expression with the same denominator. So the rest is just doing the corresponding operations that are indicated there. So we're going to multiply here. You're going to apply the distributive property here, the distributive property here. So we're going to get 3 times x is going to be 3x uh, minus 3 times negative 1 or is going to be negative 3. Then plus 5 times x is just 5x. And plus 5 times 1 is going to be 5. Everything over x minus 1 multiplying x plus 1. Then you combine like terms. So you have 5x plus 3x is going to be ax and 5 minus 3 is going to be 2 and you have x minus 1 times x plus 1 and at the end you need to check that you have a, a common factor that can be removed from, from remove um, both from the numerator and the denominator so the greatest common factor from the numerator is going to be uh, 2 that multiplies 4x plus 1 and the final answer is just this one. So nothing more you can do. So that's the final answer for this problem. So I'm going to work more exercises and the best way to learn this is if you work on these problems. So Let's see, I'm going to work example six now. So there are uh, three more problems. So this, and I'm going to solve all of them because you need this uh, to understand very well the, this method. So example six is on page 513. So we're going to subtract. And it's just x over x plus 3 minus 1. So uh, remember, we need to, 
to have a rational expressions in both cases, so we need fractions. Uh, so we're going to rewrite this as x over x plus 3, and we're going to use our parentheses, minus 1 over 1. Now you see two fractions. Now you see two denominators. Those denominators are different, so we need to find the least common denominator, the least common denominator using the uh, your test book's uh, method is just going to be the first denominator times the uh, different factors from the other denominators. So the missing or, the, or different factors uh, is just one in this case. So the least common denominator is x plus 3. Now I'm going to rewrite this in a way that I can get the least common denominator, so I'm going to multiply this by something, minus this, multiply by something. So for the first case, you already have the least common denominator, so you multiply by 1. Uh, for the second case, you only have 1, you need to multiply by something to get x plus 3, then you need to multiply by x plus 3, and x plus 3, so, and that's it. Now we have the same denominator for both rational expressions. So, we're going to have a single uh, denominator, a common denominator. So, uh, from the first numerator, you have x times 1 is just x. From the second one, you have this negative sign here, and we have... 1 times x plus e is just x plus 3. Then you need to apply the distributive property here. So you're going to get x minus the x is going to end up with negative sign here and the number 3 also with negative sign over x plus 3. You cancel these two, so you end up with negative 3 over x plus 3. So that's the final answer for this problem. Okay, we're going to work two more examples and then you're going to have the opportunity to play with the, with this problem. So we're going to have example 7 on page 514. Uh, we have another subtraction, so we're going to subtract uh, y plus 2 over 4y plus 16 uh, minus 2 over y squared plus 4 why? So that's the problem. So you can see the denominators are different. Use parentheses to prevent mistakes. So let's factor the denominators. So to f again, to find the least common denominator, first factor the denominators. That's the first step. We didn't do that before because our denominators were already in the in its simple form. So in this case we can factor something here. So I'm going to factor 4y plus 16. So you can see here that the greatest common factor is going to be 4 multiplying y plus 4. The other one, we're going to factor y squared plus 4y. So you're going to get y that multiplies y plus 4. So I'm going to rewrite this by using those factors. So I'm going to get y plus 2 over 4 uh, that multiplies y 
plus 4, then I have negative sign here to my numerator for the second rational expression. And then this denominator can be written now as y times y plus 4. So again, you can use the formula to get the least common denominator. So you multiply this, but you need to get the greatest common factor. So sometimes it's, it's confusing when you have these kind of expressions in parentheses. So let's use the method uh, that you have in, the, in your book. So we want to find the least common denominator by using the method from the book. So we're going to compose the least common denominator. That's the method that you have in your book. So you start again with the denominator from your first Uh, rational expression and then you're going to multiply by any other factor that is not present already here so is y present here as a factor no i'm going to use y here is y plus 4 present here as another as a factor yes it is it's, over, it's already here so we don't need to include this y plus 4 because it's already here so if you have y plus 4 square then you need to include it because y plus 4 square is of a higher degree than y plus 4 only but this is not the case so y plus 4 uh, from the second rational expression is already a factor for the sec for the first uh, denominator uh, for the denominator of the, the first rational expression so this is my least common denominator okay the first denominator and every other factor any other factor that is not already in the least common denominator that we are composing so let's uh, now rewrite the, the rational expressions in in a, in a way that they are going to have the same denominator so we have I'm going to write again I have y plus 2 over and then now the first denominator is 4y 4 times y plus 4 I'm going to multiply this by something so I need to use parentheses to prevent mistake mistakes then I have minus 2 over y times y plus 4 and then something here. So uh, it's good when you have the least common denominator in a factor form because you can just check what is the missing term in my denominator. So I have 4 y plus 4 and I need to include y for the second denominator. I have y, y plus 4, I'm missing only 4. So now I have my, both denominators are the same. So you can just uh, simplify this by writing, uh, you multiply these two, so you're going to get, you're going to apply the distributive property here. So you're going to get uh, y squared plus 2y over and we're going to put this in order I'm going to multiply 4 and y is going to be just 4y y plus 4 then minus 4 times 2 is going to be 8 and then we put this in order so it's going to be 4y that multiplies y plus 4 so as you can see now we have two rational expressions with the same denominator and that denominator is 4y multiplying y plus 4 which is also the least common denominator that we found before so now we're gonna proceed with the creating our or com com composing our, or combining the, the numerators into a single one so you're gonna get y squared plus 2y minus 8 so that's the end of the uh, that's the end of the um, 
the process of subtraction, but not, that's not the end of the of the problem. We need to uh, see whether we can simplify that by factoring this numerator. So let's see. I'm going to factor y squared plus 2y minus a. So I'm going to look for two numbers. That if I multiply them, I get negative a. If I add them up, I'm going to get 2. So those numbers are 4 and negative 2. So the product is negative 8. And the addition of these two is going to be positive 2. So now we're going to write this as y squared plus 4y minus 2y minus 8. So you factor by grouping. So you get y that multiplies y plus 4 minus 2 that multiplies y plus 4. So this is going to be y plus 4 times y minus 2. So now we can rewrite the rational expression as y plus 4 that multiplies y minus 2. That's the numerator over 4y that multiplies y plus 4. You can see here now that we can remove this and this. Remember, we cannot remove pieces, single pieces from every parenthesis. So that's the importance of using parentheses. We prevent mistakes. So the final answer then is going to be y over two, y minus 2 over 4y. So the last problem that we're going to solve before you playing with these methods is going to be example 8. Example 8 on page 5. 15. So it's an addition. So this is x squared minus 2 over 2x squared minus x minus 3 plus x minus 2 over 3 minus 2x. So the first thing that you can do is we're going to reverse the signs here uh, because the leading coefficient, the leading term should be 2x. So you know that you change this sign and change everything on the, on the bottom of this uh, rational expression. So this is going to be x squared minus 2 over 2x squared minus x minus 3 minus x minus 2 to x minus 3. So I change these signs, the signs of these two terms, and also at the same time I change in this, so that's what I get. So now we're going to be able first to factor the least common denominator by factoring first the denominator. So we're going to start factoring the denominators. This is for us to be able to, to get the least common <coughs> denominator. So let's factor. Uh, 2x squared minus x minus 3. So I need two numbers that if I multiply them, I get 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And if I add them up, I'm going to get negative 1. So you know all these processes, processes now. So what are those two numbers? Uh, they are going to be negative 3, positive 2, you get negative 6, negative 3, plus positive 2, you get negative 1. So those are our numbers. So we're going to break this in the following way. You get 2x squared uh, minus 3 uh, x plus 2x minus 3. Now we can pour our factoring by grouping. So the only thing that you can factor out uh, this uh, first group is going to be x that multiplies 2x minus 3. 
the only thing that you can factor out of this group is just 1, 2x minus 3. So this is going to give you the, uh, the this factor. It's going to be 2x minus 3 is the common binomial. And x plus 1 is the other binomial that includes the various common factors from, from the factoring by grouping. Okay, so we're going to rewrite this then uh, in the following way. So it's going to be going back to our to a rational expression, you have x squared minus 2 over 2x minus 3 times x plus 1. So that's the denominator now written in a factor form. Then we have minus uh, x minus 2 over 2x minus 3. So what is the least? Uh, common denominator, the least common denominator is going to be just uh, the first denominator, 2x minus 3, x plus 1. Then we're going to multiply by any other factor that is not already here. So you see 2x minus 3 is already here. So that's it. This is the least common denominator. So we're going to rewrite this in a way that we have the least common denominator as the common denominator for both. So this is 2x minus 3 that multiplies x plus 1 that multiplies something that we don't know yet minus x minus 2 over 2x minus 3 multiplying something that we don't know yet. So uh, what are those somethings? So in the first case you compare your least common denominator, you compare your denominator, you see that you don't miss, you don't need anything else, so it's just 1. In the second case, you see that you have 2x minus 3 here. The only thing that you are missing is x plus 1, so you're going to write here x plus 1. So now we have the same common denominator. Don't forget parentheses, otherwise we can make mistakes. So I'm going to write now my least common denominator. I'm going to write now uh, the numerator is going to be x squared minus 2 uh, minus, and we're going to multiply this to uh, binomials. So I'm going to write here the, in, I'm going to indicate the operation. So I need to do this multiplication. Let's do it somewhere x minus 2 that multiplies x plus 1 is going to be this multiplying this and this and this multiplying this and this. So x times x is going to be x squared. Uh, x times 1 is going to be just 1x. Then negative 2 multiplying x is going to be negative 2x. Negative 2 multiplying 1 is going to be negative 2. Then the final answer is going to be x squared. Uh, x minus 2x is going to be minus x and negative 2. So I'm going to rewrite this in the following way. x squared minus 2. I'm going to start removing parentheses. And then I have this product is going to be x squared minus x minus 2 over... 2x minus 3 that multiplies x plus 1. Now we're going to apply the distributive property here to remove this parenthesis. So we're going to get the following thing. So we get uh, x squared minus 2 minus x squared plus x plus 2. So everything inside of the parenthesis change sign. So negative, positive, positive, negative, positive, positive, over 2x minus 3, multiplying x plus 1. 
Now we simplify x squared and x squared with negative sign. They vanish. Then we have only one x here. And negative 2 and positive 2, they, they also cancel. So the final answer is going to be just x over uh, 2x minus 3, x plus 1. Let me check because I can make mistakes. And maybe, let's see, we got the right answer. Ah, oh, yeah, we got the right answer. So for a moment, I thought I could have made a mistake somewhere, but no, we are fine. So now it's your turn. So you're going to work five exercises from the book. So these are on page 517. So I'm going to stay here uh, half an hour for you to give me your answers, or otherwise you send me, or you submit your class work by using a canvas. So let's see, you're going to work. The first exercise is just 18. <coughs> is uh, 4 over x plus 8 over x squared. Then we have a problem 30 is 3 over x plus 4 over x minus 6. Then we have problem 38 is just 8 over x plus 6. Uh, minus 2 over x minus 6. Then we have problem 42 is 8y over y squared minus 16 minus 5 over uh, y plus 4, then problem 15, 3x plus 7 over x squared minus 5x plus 6 minus 3 over x minus 3 um, that's it solve these problems uh, send me your answers through the chat box or through campus by taking screenshots and uploading the corresponding file uh, by pressing the submit button in the corresponding class work uh, link